40s costumes. 1940s. Make it more like the ghost train. Now, that's a good play. I don't think they'd be interested to do Macbeth at Chichester like the ghost train next season. I don't think they're ready for it. Oh, very well. Tell them to get stuffed. I have. Good. I didn't think they put a bloody cheek off. We need Banquo's ghost. Didn't they see my Hamlet? Yes, they did. Oh, and that's it, is it? That's all you have to report? Yes. Well, stand at ease. Don't look so bloody pleased with yourself. You're supposed to be finding me work. Have you ever thought of finding a younger man? You were younger. It wasn't much different. I've always had to find my own work. You're useless. Bloody useless man. Then why pay me 10%? Loyalty. Oh. Devotion to an old friend. Something you're short of, you wouldn't understand loyalty with your newfangled clients that take up all your time. Do help yourself to a whiskey. Thank you. I was doing. I'm surprised you're not down at the cottage, Arnold. Really? Yes. What with it being Katie's 21st birthday. What? what? Today? Tomorrow. Oh, thank God. They don't need me to blow up the balloons. I've got a career to look after. Stark poverty is staring me in the face, man. And all you can think about is whether I've put the bloody icing on the cake. I'll be there. Don't worry. So will I. Don't worry. I should hope so. An old family friend. Lovely. Lovely. You go back a long way in my life, Digby. It was you who introduced me to Ada. You knew her before I did. Yes. Brought us together. Well, you didn't need much encouraging. It was a splendid thing you did. For all concerned. It gave me great pleasure. Yes, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it was a great relief to you. Relief? Would you say, Digby, that a man can ever be sure that he sired his children? I... I don't get your drift. Well... As in Ibsen's The Wild Duck, when a cuckoo was firmly planted in the nest. Do you remember that as a wedding present you had the temerity to cancel a £500 debt I owed you? Quite a lot in those days. Well, I thought... I thought it was a nice gesture. You had quite enough on your plate. What with the... Uh... Baby coming along... Oh, I was asleep at the wheel. I must get off the road. Get off the road. Right, I'm going down to the phone box to have the line tested. Roger, don't leave us. I think he should leave us. Why don't you go to the Arctic with that nice young man, Nigel, who's always smoking a pipe? Why don't you stop trying to get rid of me? That way you might succeed. There's someone outside. Did you hear that branch break? It's our loonies. They've started nesting. I hate trees near the house. Move them. Father can move anything. If he can move mountains, he can move a few trees. I'm sure I heard someone outside. I'm sure I heard someone inside. Inside? Who? You. It's very frightening. <laughs> Ta-ra, then. I've got to cut the apron strings, Katie. It's no good Roger hanging around the house waiting to be cast as Sabu in Arnold's next picture. I mean, it made sense five years ago, but he's grown far too tall recently. I can't see Roger on an elephant, can you? Mm. I can cope with you at home, darling, writing your novel, and someday soon you'll sell those film rights. Oh, yes, mark my words for a big sum. Telephone numbers. And there'll be one condition. Guess who gets to play the starring role? Arnold Gosport. Daddy. When you dream, Katie, dream big. Don't ask the good Lord for less than a miracle. I won't. You never heard of Jesus curing chilblains, did you? Nope. It's always big things. Blindness, total paralysis. Rigor mortis, mums. Dad will go back to the top, won't he? Oh, higher than ever, Katie. Something's got to happen soon. It will, Katie. It will. Please. Don't be afraid. We'll give ourselves up if you are. Come in, Eric. Oh, what? We hope you might have a new attitude to mental illness. Oh, yes. We'll shut the window. Eric, shut the window. Why are you standing there shivering? I'll shut it. Like a child he is. Don't try no funny business. Oh, what, what, what do you want? What are you doing here? I feel we should give ourselves up. I mean, intruding. It don't seem right. 
I'd rather be wrongly incarcerated, eh, Eric? And cause good folk trouble. Come on, Eric, speak up, they won't hurt you. You should have got dressed before we came out. I gave you lots of warning. Tighten your pyjama cord. Where's the phone? Where is it? In the hallway. It's cut off. Who cut it off? You cut it off? To destroy our communications? No. No, look here, chaps. Who cut the phone off? A wind might have brought down a line. Not blowing hard enough. Oh, British Telecom, then. What? We're behind on the account. You're not paying your bills. That's why they cut you off. Pay them. Always pay your bills. Never get behind. The man with a pound who spends 19 and 6 is a happy man. What exactly are you doing in our house? That's a good question. First, we was wrongly accused. That's the basis of our case. Accused of what? Can't remember. Well, you'll do well to keep out of it. You're a good and dear woman, but keep your nose out of things. I'll make the decisions. Stop shaking, Eric. He's scared. I told you they won't hurt you. No. These are good folk, normal folk, not brittle. Can't you say something, ma'am? Keep calm. Oh, why is he clenching his fists like that? Keep calm, Eric. Our own words, the dear lady, not a trace of vulgarity. Thank you, ma'am. We're going back, Eric. I'll get the lady to phone the ambulance. The phone's cut off. Is it? That's strange. Oh, let me handle this, Katie. All right, you boys. Let's just sit back and relax. There's nothing wrong with a little outing, is there? We do know where you're from, and believe me, it's no stigma. Stigmata. The blood of the lamb. I know. I know these things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kate. <laughs> I can't help it. What's she laughing at? I don't know. It's her birthday. <laughs> oh. Many happy returns. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be all right in a moment. You will. That's right. Would you like some champagne? What about you, Eric? Uh -huh. Would you like to toast the ladies' health before we get back? You would, wouldn't you? Oh, do, please, both of you. I'm 21 today. That's special. So your honoured guests. Hold these glasses. Come on, Gaty, I don't think this is the right line of approach. Oh, of course it is. Don't you see? They've come out of the blue. It, it's fate, destiny. Don't you believe in that? A very happy birthday, miss. Katie. I don't want to get too familiar. You're not from Madogram, are you? No. Cheers, miss. Cheers. May we not forget those wrongly incarcerated through bad diagnosis or wrong conviction. Cheers. Cheers. Do have some more. Let's finish the bottle. So nice of you to drop in. Are you planning to stay 30 days? What? To establish your innocence. What's that? Roger. On the phone? On a bicycle. The phone's cut off. Does he take messages? <laughs> he might do. <laughs> Roger could ride back to the hospital. What? Why, clothes. Eric? He could fetch my clothes right back on his Oh, uh, no, I th no. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Eric says Roger might go back to the hospital to fetch his clothes. No, Eric. You're wanted now. We're wanted now. Can't you understand? Yeah, let him fetch them, please. Can't he fetch No, them? Roger can't fetch your clothes or the game would be up. He wouldn't know. They'd know who their clothes were he for, would... even if he didn't say. <laughs> oh. You want to remember they used to eat you. You're not going to start doing your favours now, Mr. DeWitt. Mr. Derry, I want to talk to you. Private. I want a private interview. Can you arrange it? I shall have to look in my engagement book. Hang on. When did you want to see me? Now. Oh, that's different. Go ahead. Well, like I say, I don't think you understand, son. Put yourself in my position. See these pyjamas, like, eh? eh? They're hospital property, get it? I'm asking for trouble going out in these. That's why I want my clothes. Start again, fresh. Hey, look, see, eh, eh, these slippers. Well, I mean, they're personal trust for matron. They're the only size eight in the place. They'll be coming after me for these slippers. <laughs> They'll have the dogs out. Hello, then. Company. Roger, it's quite all right. There's no cause for alarm. These men are patients from the local hospital. Seeking They're... a new attitude to mental illness. That's right. So they've just popped in to discuss their little problems. After breaking out? No, sir. We're self-discharged. What? 
I've all the paperwork here, all in order. All ship shape and Bristol fashion. I've the discharge certificates here, if you'd care to glance at them. Here they are, signed by self, so to speak. You'll see all the paperwork is in order, here. See, Brian Derry, absolute discharge, miracle cure, that's me. Oh. And here, yes, here we are, yeah, Eric DeWitt for outpatient therapy. As soon as I get my clinic going, that is. Thank you. Right, any time. You can't go signing yourself out of a locked ward, you know. <laughs> oh, I. Who else will sign us out? You a doctor, are you? No. Well, fat lot you know. There's some incarcerated in there, yes. Only takes a bit of paper signed by the right person to get them out. Who gave them the right to sign the papers? God, I can sign. It is old type. They have some grudge, Roger. I see. Oh, Are you dangerous? No. Aye. Oh, aye. No, you're not, Eric. Not if you're treated right. Aye. Oh, yes. Well, there are as many balmy out here as there are back there. I'm not balmy. I am. Roger, please, this isn't helping. All right. Look, we don't have to be so condescending to these people. We haven't been voted sane family of the year, have we? Look, chaps, we do wish you the best of luck, really. But obviously, you must be on your way. Now, hang on. Don't tell me. We was wrongly classified. What is he going on about? Someone tell me, please. Katie, leave this to me. Look, I can handle oh, it. Oh, yes, man, about the house, eh? What are you implying? The way you're handling this, we could be slaughtered in our beds. I think I'm going to scream. Keep her quiet, missus. You. Are you on our side against the hospital authorities? I'm against all authorities. And I know what those mental wards are like. I read the Sunday papers. I'm going to tell my story to them. Worse than since Charles Dick is. When I tell my story, I shall launch an inquiry and clear my good name. Roger, did you check the phone? The phone's cut off. We did that, missus. Well, we didn't know it was good folk in here. So we had to take every precaution. And that was very naughty. Naughty. We're not children. I was only trying to help. We've been out. I've been out. Now we help ourselves, missus. The time has come. I've got papers and files here, case histories, all documented, sworn statements from the patients. Where do I have this evidence under my mattress, in the mattress? I've got a story to tell that will shock the world. Well, you can't stay here and tell it. No. Quite honestly, we've got our own problems. We're not the right people for you. Look, just go. We've got a gun. You got a gun, Eric? Don't close up on me again like a wallflower he is. Have you got the gun? <laughs> He's lost it. Why don't you just go now and take your chances? We won't turn you in. Why are you shaking, Eric? Have you got a temperature? My brother's bigger than yours. Any of your brothers. All right, Eric. I'm not saying you got the gun. Oh, look in the bag. Oh, here it is. <laughs> All the time. Mum, he has got a gun. Roger, are you satisfied now? What do you mean, am I satisfied? Well, you're in charge, aren't you? Oh, it's my fault he's got a gun, is it? I was supposed to know that. I suppose the hospital issues them before they break out, sort of going home for the weekend kit. Use your initiative. We'll start the siren after counting up to ten and you run for it. What? What's that? You haven't heard half the story. Originally, I went in the hospital to look for my mother disguised as a patient. Oh, I find illness. Mental to search for her. That's my story. That is a very interesting story. But please, you don't need to wave that gun around. What's that? What's that? Stop shivering, Eric. I don't get proper treatment, you know, from the doctors. Weeks and weeks, you don't see one of them. Well, I was treating them because I've been sick. I knew what it is like to be sick. Don't think it is right treating people if you haven't been sick yourself. I went in that hospital on the strict understanding that I could work up my way from patient to doctor. Start at the bottom. I was prepared to, as an humble patient wriggling inside a straitjacket. Not as bad as that, but I would have. But they demoted me. That was tragic. I started off as a voluntary patient, finished up signed in, padded cell. OK, I got to a bad start. But I soon improved. So I'm pressing forwards and I say, you can promote me to male nurse at least. No, blocked. That was the understanding, because they knew I could go to the top. Doctor, consultant. But they bring in this lot from the universities. 
When we that's had experience in the ranks is overlooked. In the ranks of the sick. Well, I served my time in the ward. I'm better now. I know how to do it. And I know how to make others better. Self-taught, right? Best kind. I'm sure I can guarantee you that if you just go quietly back to the hospital and explain to the doctors that you're feeling better, y yes, they're bound to express interest. And you'll be discharged in no time at all. Well, I'm glad you came here because patience is what we all must learn. That's right. Well said. Patience is a virtue. Oh, I'm so glad you agree. We're talking horse sense. I don't bet on horses. No. So your best chance of happiness... Is to follow my plan. Every great man has a plan. Yes. Right, Eric, tie him up. Pardon? Tie him up, Eric. This won't take a moment. Oh, no. Katie, it's all right. I forbid you to tie us up. Uh, first. Right. Cooperate with them. Just right. do as they say. Please, no. Kate, it's going to be all right. That's right. We're just getting to know each other. Bound to be some teething problems. No wonder they broke out. No board would release those two in a thousand years. What do I tie them up with? Be so kind as to use the curtains. Oh, you certainly will not. Daddy! Daddy, where are you? It's a visitor. It's not a visitor, Eric. This ain't the hospital. Oh, you tell that to Matron. He's coming this way. A doctor, then? Not a doctor. I can't see no stethoscope. Shall I shoot? Hold your fire. It's the father. I don't like fathers. She's 21 today. She's 21 today. She's got the key of the door. Never been. Who the hell are you? We represent Mental Health Week, sir. I only support National Lifeboat Week. Oh. Because I have a fear of drowning. I see, sir. That could be described as a mental condition, sir, and could come under our week. You're very persuasive. Thank you, sir. It's not often I part with 10p in such a random manner. Now, where are my family? Do you happen to know? They're safe and well, sir. In the cellar. That's odd. Shall I plug him? Shall I plug him right now? What's he waving that gun around for? Is this some sort of rag week? Students, are you? I am a student of human nature, sir. It is my contention that any caged creature will fight for its freedom. That's nonsense. And I am speaking as a married man. Now, what do you mean, my family are in the cellar? What are they doing down there? Has everyone gone mad? Stay where you are, sir. <laughs> Don't move! Oh, good God! Eric, be careful. <laughs> I, I didn't do it! Be careful <laughs> with firearms, Eric. I'll never forgive your brother for smuggling that gun in in a cake. His brother came here in a cake? He came to visit Eric at the hospital. You can put your hands down now, sir. Don't worry. The hospital's not in a cake. I know that. I'm not a lunatic. That's why you're outside the hospital, sir. Uh, that's why I'm outside the cake. Yeah. <laughs> well, there doesn't appear to be much wrong with you chaps. There's plenty wrong with Eric. I should be in the nick for what I've done. All his family is criminals. Village... St. Valentine's Day massacre, Humphrey Bogart, hit the big sleep, no orchids for Miss Brandish. I'll tell him, Eric. <laughs> All his family is villains, like he says. And they have taken great offence at Eric being shoved in an asylum. Oh, I see. I should have got GBA. No, you're in need of treatment. You have uncontrollable urges. Yes, Doctor. As I see it, you chaps get a bit of a raw deal. Oh, you... Now, don't get jumpy. I'm just helping myself to my own booze that I paid for, I would point out. Of course, you chaps broke out to complain about the conditions inside. When you have fresh vegetables, sort of thing. Taking away your teddy bears. And we're innocent. Well, yes. He didn't kill his mum and dad. I did. Caught them in the bath together. Threw in the electric fire, didn't I? <laughs> Switch on. That did it. Well, he was provoked, that's what I'm saying. You were very young at the time, a tender age to become an orphan. Yeah. Did you tell the judge about the bath? None of his business. That's it, you see. You must tell him everything. I didn't see no judge. You will next time. Uh, look, can we discuss all this later? First, you must free my family. My dear Katie. She's terribly disappointed you missed her partly. Is she? Well, there is an explanation. Damn, I'm blasted. I'm a breadwinner. I can't be at everyone's beck and call. It was her 21st, sir. Only comes once in a lifetime. Oh, shut up! You don't have to pay the rent, do you? The mortgage. It's all right for you to go popping off at ornaments. Who's going to pay for the breakages? I do feel bad about that, sir. 
If ever you need any medical help of a psychiatric nature, I shall be pleased to make a reduction in my fees to you. I'd rather go to a doctor, thank you. I am a doctor. That is, I will be as soon as I get the recognition from the British Medical Association. You heard of people being struck off their register? Well, if people can be struck off it, they can be struck on it. I'm impressed by your logic. Now, please... Hey, you, button up your lips, son. I've been watching you. I beg your pardon? Hey, what do you think I'm holding here? A banana? No, it's a gun. Go to the top of the class. If you want to shoot me, go ahead. I've lived a pretty useless life, really. A lot of bizarres and ballyhoo. I've been great by the world standards, yes, but I'm pretty broken down now. So you might as well finish me off, if you were mine to. I've seen you on telly, ain't I? My God, yes, you have. Uh, does this mean anything to you? <laughs> it's Elephant Bill. Fame at last. Hey, can I have your autograph? Eric, Eric. Hey, hey. Go and fetch Miss Katie up. Wait a minute. What am I going to tell everyone? Just tell them what happened, sir, to keep you from the party. Don't guess. Don't go on about it. Don't nag. I know where I was. I uh, had a most important meeting. Of course I did. Arnold, I got your message. I hope you wiped the tape. I packed an overnight bag and just rushed here. Uh, Darling! Helen, this is no place to be demonstrative. P please! You've finally made up your mind. You're leaving your wife. I can't take it anymore. I long for you, Helen. I'm here. I'm by your side. Did we have to meet in an underground car park? Helen, I'm known in Exeter. Especially after that rerun of Elephant Bill. Oh, you look so young in that. What are you implying? I keep in good shape. I know that. Better than anyone. Well, let's get out of here, please. There's no turning back now, Arnold. Uh, did you bring your post office savings box? Yes. Good girl. Let's shove your things in the boot. And we'll go to a little place I know on the moors. They're very discreet. I don't care if the whole world knows. Steady, Helen. We're dealing with a career here, you know what you are, not what you've been. Thank you for that telling phrase, Helen. Give me that travelling bag. I don't call this an overnight bag. You've got your life in here. Arnold, what's that? What? There's a body in the boot of your car. How did that get there? You should know. Should I? Where are you going? Certainly not with you. Goodbye. Helen, come back. Drat the woman. What's wrong with her? Body in the boot? It wasn't there when I had the car MOT'd. You look like you've seen a ghost, Mr. Gosport. As a matter of fact, I'm a bit concerned. I've left something in the boot of my car, and it might go off. What is it? It's a cheese. Oh. Do you want to bring it in the house, sir? No! It would smell the place out. I want to bury it. Where? At the bottom of the garden. It's a big cheese. We'll need a big hole. I, I don't want you to look at the cheese. Are you ashamed of it? Yes, I am. It was a foolish expenditure on such a tight budget. I thought I was getting a bargain, you see. We all make mistakes. Sir. Please don't mention this to anyone. I won't. <laughs> Here she is. Dad! Katie! Katie! Oh, Kel, Dad. Katie, my angel! <laughs> Dad, 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 Dad. Dad! It's all right. I'm home. They tied us up all night in the cellar. God, it must have been hell. Oh, thank God you're back. Yes. Did my agent call? Were there any messages? I don't think so. The phone's cut off. Cut off? You can't cut off an actor's phone. It's his lifeline. That's the one bill I always pay. We cut the phone off, sir. Then our situation is quite desperate. Do you realise I may never work again? Who knows who was calling? It doesn't bear thinking about. Hollywood, Elstree, casting agents all over the world. Dads, don't take on, sir. It's all right. Katie, this is the pits. We're finished. Done for. I'll never work again. One call. I know it in my water. The one call I've been waiting for and the bloody phone's cut off. Yeah.
Miss Katie. What a pleasure it is to have a musical evening. Miss Katie, could you just play that little end bit again? Dad, if you distract Eric for a moment, I'll grab the gun. Roger, this is real life. Things work out differently. What are you saying? No mock heroics, thank you. You don't have to prove your manliness to me. How could you? That's a rotten thing to say. I'm not proving anything. I don't have to prove anything to you. And I don't have to prove anything to you. What's that? Or you. I've got nothing to prove. I know you have none. Well, stop asking me about my trip. I haven't mentioned it. You'll tell us in your own good time. Perhaps I won't. Why should I always tell you my business? It's family business, Arnold. But I know what you mean if you want to play the strong, silent type. I am not playing anything. Nor am I. The fact that we've sacrificed everything for your career, Arnold, may mean nothing to you. I didn't ask you to sacrifice. When you met me, a sacrifice was not discussed. If you gave up your career as a tap dancer... Ballet dancer. Well, whatever it was, it's your business. I didn't stop you dancing with Nureyev. I decided to have a family and I don't regret it. Well, thanks a lot. If you'd consulted me, I would have advised against it. That would have been impossible. Look, folks, let's just take it from here, shall we? That's a good idea. If Daddy doesn't want to talk about his trip, he's probably too upset about what he found when he got home. That's right. It pales to insignificance besides this, the distress. I wish I hadn't gone away. Really, I do. What's a sequel to Elephant Bill compared to the trouble we're in? A sequel? Verbal assurances, Ada. Contracts to follow? That's right. We're better off here. We're better off here dealing with this than living in the noddy land of his expectations. What do you mean, Roger? Oh, we've been here before. Don't you remember? Contracts following, shifting sands. It's not always easy to set up a movie. I agree. Roger's right. Good boy. And that's why I wasn't going to mention it. Raise your hopes. What for? To have them dashed again? Roger's right. But what did happen on the trip, Arnold? Let us evaluate it, please. Well, I popped in the Ritz for afternoon tea, and there was Mickey. Mickey Kane. Right as the button. What are you doing now, he said. I saw Elephant Bill on television, he said. And a sequel is long overdue. Oh. I would love to play Von Tick, the villain, he said. May I speak to my agent about it? Certainly, I said. Have you any objection to Sean? Sean, he said, playing a part. Sean, Sean Connery. That's right. I said, look, let's all have a bit of fun together. It's all right by but me. these names are big box office. That's what it needs. Oh, not to belittle your talent, Arnold. Quite. But these people are hot now. What about Roger Moore? Oh, yes. He wants to do it as well. He came in for a scone and we all got together. It was one of those magic coincidences when everything just comes together and everybody wants to do the same thing. I mean, a jungle picture... Well, I was astonished. Where's the film going to be made? Well, we all agreed Brazil. Oh. I've got to make it with that 30s flavour, like the Raiders of the Lost Ark, a big adventure story, oh. but more tongue-in-cheek this time. Do we all get to go to Brazil? I don't see why not. Of course we do. Oh, this is wonderful news. Of course, it's too early to celebrate, but I sensed that something was in the wind. Didn't I tell you, children? Mm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. The big payoff. Full directed. Dickie. Of course. He owes us a favour. That Attenborough, you've done so much for him. Did he drop in to tea at the Ritz? No, 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 no. <laughs> that would have been too much to ask. Mickey said he'd talk to Dickie. Mickey's talking to Dickie? Oh, for God's sake. Dad, did you see Digby while you're in town? No, 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 certainly not. Why didn't he come to my party? I don't know. It's most unlike him. He's so reliable. Reliable? Oh, yes. You can rely on him to do nothing while I go out and get the work. You can rely on him to sit in his office and wait for me to bring the contracts to him. I mean, he's reliable as a person. Reliable stick in the mud. I mean, you know where you are with him. You know exactly where you are. Finished, washed up and done for. You can see it in his eyes. Why don't you change your agent? Oh, they're all the same. Parasites. Then why have an agent? Well, you've got to, haven't you? Why? I don't know why. I don't have all the answers, Roger. If I did, I'd be a very wise man. I don't know why an actor has to have an agent. I don't know why dogs have fleas. You can get rid of fleas. I know, I'm fully aware of that, Roger. Perhaps Digby's not well. 
That's possible. Might have taken a powder. A flea powder? <laughs> I do like old Digby. He's never let me down before. It's not like him. I think something's wrong. Something's happened. Here, something's wrong, Katie. And somewhere else. The whole world is out of joint. There's a disharmony. The orchestra's gone mad. Where is the conductor? He's shot himself. Are we to continue the concert without him? That's why we're here. Then let's get on with it. Eric. Oh, you... Wake up. <laughs> oh, what's that? Is it time for me medicine? No, Eric. Hmm? I've yet to arrange your medication. Uh, You've got to keep guard now. What? So as I can have a kit. Oh, they're banged up in the cellar. They can't get out. Listen, I've got to get my beauty sleep too, son. Now might be the best time. That's what I was thinking. To do that job for Mr. Gospel. What job? To bury his cheese. His big cheese. To bury the big cheese? That's right, Eric. Before it goes off. Oh, aye. Hmm. Bury the big cheese, eh? <laughs> hey, why should we do his dirty work? What's he done for us? Is he putting the screws on, is he? Has he got something on you, son? <laughs> A figure from the past, eh? I've never seen him before, Eric. Ah, oh, then let him bury his own big cheese. What about our big cheese? Who's going to bury that? What are you referring to? Yes, Arthur. We had to kill Nurse Arthur for our freedom's sake. It was the only way to get out. The courts will understand that. Any man will kill for his friend's freedom. It's nature. Law is based on nature. Oh, aye. <laughs> Tell the judge that. I intend to. Where did you put Nurse Arthur? In the piano. He always liked music. Perhaps we should bury him with a big cheese. Suit yourself. I'll be sorry to see him go, I'll tell you that. I like Nurse Arthur. Always giving me sweeties, you are. You won't be getting no more sweeties from Nurse Arthur. Uh, that's your fault. There'll be a vengeance on you for that. There's no way to talk to your doctor. You're not my doctor. I am. Then where's my medicine? You'll have to wait a little while, Eric. Till I get my compensation. And get my clinic started. Eric? Eric! Ah, oh, he's gone off to sleep again. Never mind. Never mind. I shall find my mother someday. She'll be proud of a doctor for her son. She'll be in a sick bed somewhere. I just want to visit her on a regular basis. Is that asking too much? I, I told you, I told you we should have buried that cheese last night. Now what have we got? The law, your old bill snooping around outside. Why, do you ever think incarcerating me in a cellar all night? And then you expect a good reference, don't you? Good character reference. But is this any way to treat the head of a family? Shape up, damn it! <laughs> What's he doing? He's sniffing out that cheese. It's illegally imported. Why is he beeping the horn? To draw our attention. He's got that. I should wake up Eric. We'll handle this. All right. I'll answer it. Now, don't panic. I'll put him off. And keep out of sight. What do you want? Good day to you, sir. What in the hell are you making that racket on my car horn for, officer? I was trying to arouse the house, sir. The neighbourhood, more like. It was a ruse, sir. There are two dangerous lunatics who have escaped from the local hospital. We're doing a house-to-house -house call. You've left it a bit late, haven't you? They broke out the night before last. Uh, it's a new theory, sir, that they may not, after all, have got clear of the area. They might, at this very moment, be holding a family hostage. Rubbish! And that doesn't give you an excuse to bonk my horn like that. Well, it might have drawn some fire, sir. These loonies are armed. And a good thing, too. They killed a male nurse to get out. Shot dead. Have you seen anything suspicious? No. Wink twice with your left eye if there's any trouble in the house. What sort of trouble? Ah, uh, so I take it everything is hunky-dory here, sir. And I just popped by to remind you that your car tax disc is out of date. 
That's naughty. I'm extremely sorry. Uh, look, we're not here to hound you, but to help you keep your house in order. House in order? If you see what I mean. I certainly do, Constable. Well, yes, it's my opinion, sir, that the lunatics got clear away from here. They're well away by now, eh? <laughs> so get your tax up to date and we'll say no more about it. <laughs> Good day, sir. Get off my property immediately. Thank you, sir. You might have played football with the striking miners in 1926, but no one would give you a game nowadays, your lot, because you're not to be trusted. Well, any time you want a game, sir. <laughs> Any time I want a game, indeed. What's he want? He wants to play football with us. What? Get up a scratch team. They're bored. I heard him ask about lunatics. I told them we haven't got any. I hope so, sir, because i got lots of hostages. Nonsense. It's a matter of trust, Brian. Trust. I want you to stay here forever. I like you and Eric. And I expect you to be out earning soon, of course. Of course I do. Yes, sir. And I want you to have your own room with Eric. That will be nice. With chintz curtains. I love it. And doves cooing under the elbows. Whose elbows? Under the arches. We will get doves, of course we will. But first we want trust. And an end to this uh, gunslinging era. I look forward to that, sir. But I must put you back down in the cellar now with the rest while I wake up Eric. Oh, I just get you out of a tough spot, lying my teeth to the law. That's perjury. Leave your car keys. No. Why? I'll bury the cheese for you. No, no. I couldn't bear you to look at it. Why not? Because it's a hit and run job. That's why. You run over the cheese? Right. Then I put it in the boot of my car. You said you bought it. Lies. I'm a hit and run driver. The worst has happened. You were under the influence? Yes. How did the cheese get in the road? It fell off the back of a French lorry. I tried to skid to it's avoid it. It's not your fault, sir, even though you'd been drinking. I panicked. Give me the keys. No. I insist. I say yes. I'm only trying to help you. You won't like what you find. Leave it to me. They ain't eating all those cornflakes for you, Eric. We've got a whole family to feed. We might have to kill a lot. They know what I look like now. I mean, they've seen this mug of mine, haven't they? Aye. Silence them. We've got to get killing to a minimum, Eric, so we can make a good case to the courts. Oh, aye. I'm the brains. You're neurotic. So is Al Capone. The police were sniffing round while you were snoozing. Oh, aye. Fetching the big cheese from the boot of Mr Gosport's car. Right. It might be a bit of a mess. But it's better inside till we work out what to do with it. I thought we was going to bury the big cheese. Who says? Oh, I... you got there? The big cheese. What do you expect? A cheese? Where'd you get that body? In the boot of his car. Oh. Where's the cheese? I didn't see no cheese. Ah. The man had it then and died of indigestion. Oh, aye. Now put him in the window box. Right. Oh. You know, Eric... Aye, aye. Perhaps the Big Cheese was a code name. Aye. For a hit and run job. Got a big lump on his forehead. Could be an allergy.
Thank you, Daisy. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. A pleasure, Papa. <laughs> I'm glad you all believe in family entertainment. But tell us, that was repossessed. This is the sacred family hour. Perhaps Mrs. Gosport would like to read from the Bible? No, I wouldn't. How long can this go on? It's ridiculous. Mother, please, not in front of the children. And why is that piano lid coming up like that? Oh, there's a body in the piano. Eric, tuck the arm back in. Right. He's swelling up. Oh, no. No, it's all no. right, Katie. How dare you put a body in our piano? I saw move it as soon as possible. Can I have a word with you, Mr. Gosport? Of course. Any more bodies scattered around the place, are there? You'll get used to them in a little while, Katie. The abnormal soon becomes every day living in this house. You owe me an explanation, Mr. Gosport. And you're going to get one. Come into the study. Right. Eric, you take right. the gun. <sighs> it was a body in the back of your motor. Not a cheese. I lied. Again? I didn't want to involve you. You've got troubles of your own. If you'd listened to me, you'd have let me out last night to bury the cheese. You'd never have known the difference, but you had to poke your nose in, didn't you? Any man will kill for his freedom, sir. For the freedom of the road has been one of my nightmares. That I kill someone in a blackout, an alcoholic blackout. I've often woken up in the morning and examined the bumpers of my car for blood to see whether I'd moon somebody down the night before. It's dreadful. I'd like to be helpful. Well, sticking the body in our piano is not helpful. They think it's your body, the family. It's embarrassing. It is our body. Yours is in the window box. What? We can't have bodies lying around the lounge. That's not conducive for family intercourse. I think a little consideration is lacking here. I only hope the person I knocked down is elderly. I hope they already had a good innings. It's a small mercy to ask. Was it a contract killing, sir? No, no. Random. Random. Well, it's a warning to others. What others? The rest. All the rest. That's right. Look, later tonight, you and I have got to go for a drive. We'll ditch both bodies, right? Bury them in a field somewhere. Eric can guard the rest of the family put them in the cellar. They don't need to know what's going on. And we'll load up. Right? Sounds good to me. Faint love, never one fair lady. Right. Let's go back. I'm, <laughs> I'm dying for a drink. Ah, here they are. Eric, give me the gun. Oh. What were you discussing in there, Arnold? My career. You discuss your career with an intruder when we have so much to talk about? I know hardly anything about your London trip. Nor do I. Why don't you talk to me, Arnold, your wife? To be brutally frank, Ada, we've said it all. Anyway, what do I get from you when I tell you things? Encouragement. Precisely. I can't take any more encouragement. How would you like it if I came into the kitchen every time you were making an omelette and said, you can do it, Ada, you can do it, you what? can make the omelette, believe me. Don't stop halfway through. Looking at the broken eggs is part of the process, Ada, that's all. <sighs> Don't be frightened. You can make that omelette. <sighs> keep going, keep going. I believe in your omelettes. I'll always be with you by your side when you're making omelettes. I make a perfectly good omelette. And I make a perfectly good career. Leave me alone. Get out of my kitchen. Please, don't ask argue. I can't stand it. It's nothing to do with you, Katie. It gives me a headache. You give you a headache. You give yourself a headache, Katie, to get in on the act. Roger! Out of the way, Don't! Dad. Don't! Oh, don't. Ah. Oh. Roger! I had to hit him, missus. I had to hit him. He oh. came at me. Roger! That was oh. a damn silly thing to do, Roger. Roger, oh. are you all right? Uh, I think so. They could have shot you. Aye. It's all right, sir. Uh. Now, Everything's under control. Oh. Just a family tip, oh. eh? Oh, he's got an awful mark on his forehead. Shall I take him oh. outside and execute oh. him? No, Mr. DeWitt, <clears throat> that will be overreacting. This is an opportunity for you to respond to family life. I am responding. That's what I said. Shall I chop him? Oh. No. And the brains! Well, use them! Pass! 
Trust me, that ice bucket and the napkin. Yes, Mum. Oh, oh, yes, Roger's playing oh. for sympathy. Oh, there, there. This is going to be better. Playing oh. the little hero, trying to prove his masculinity. Well, we're not impressed. I was not. Roger, you've a perfect right to your own life. My God, we get enough of it in show business, don't we? Oh, yes, oh. ducky, we do. Pass oh. me a handbag, will you? Anybody seen me fags? That's quite enough, Arnold. The boy was putting us all in danger. You, you warned them. You alerted them. Dad, or I would have had the gun. Roger would have had the gun. Oh, look who's in charge now. Would life be any better under Roger with the gun? I doubt it. What are you going on about? Leave the boy <sighs> alone. He knows. Or... I decide, Roger, who has the gun. I decide. Now, leave it to me. You're in a state of collusion with these people. What? Don't you recognize it? You get grateful to them after a while. You see them as your protectors. You depend on them for everything. Oh, I see. Well, that's a theory, isn't it? Very good, Roger. Leave things to me. I'm in charge here. I pay the rent or the mortgage. I thought this house was owned outright. It is. It is, Katie, don't worry. It's owned outright, and I shall leave it to you one day. Don't talk like that, Arnold. Well, unless I live forever. Oh, sorry, Mother. Oh, this is terrible. We'll all be murdered in our beds. Oh, shut up. They don't let us go to bed, do they? Where's one of your this-is-the-night-of-your-soul-Arnold speeches? We need uplift, Ada. There are Englishmen today who will curse they were not here upon this field. For what shall they then tell their young? That's not Shakespeare, is it? Anyone can do it. I can knock up Shakespeare any day. Is he coming here? He's got the top room. Good morning. Arnold. Uh, Helen, I'm afraid our library books aren't ready. Uh, they haven't been read. In fact, not today, thank you. I haven't come about the library books, Arnold. Let me in. Arnold, listen to me. You've come in working hours. I want to talk to you. Are you alone? Yes, no. Well, yes, uh... Where is everybody? Uh, they've gone shopping. No, uh, b b b blackberry picking. That, that, that's right. Blackberry picking. Arnold, darling. Please, Helen. I forgive you. What for? Killing your agent. You always complained about him. You were never satisfied with what he was doing for you. After all, he murdered your talent. Kill my agent? Dick B. Lloyd, what nonsense are you talking, woman? Of course I haven't killed him. Then what was he doing in the boot of your car? What? Don't you know? Don't you know who you've killed? Oh, Arnold, your life is in such a mess. Oh, my God. God, was it Digby? I thought it was just a hit-and-run job. I think I love you because you're so chaotic. You're different. You're free. Well, yeah, well, I'd better have a look in the window box. <laughs> My God! You're right. Oh, this is a different kettle of fish, this is. Uh, shall I give myself up? No. He had it coming. He drained you dry, and then he abandoned you for younger men. I wouldn't do that. Look, Helen, I can't ask too much of you. It's time you went. Yes, you can. I was wrong to run out on you when we met in the underground car park. But it was such a shock. Never mind. Let's be practical. What's to be done? I don't know. Well, you can't cart the body around everywhere. You must dispose of it. Were you seen coming or going to Digby's flat or I office? I don't know. I don't remember... Coming or going to Digby's flat or office. But I... Yes, I do. Oh, my God. Yes. Now I remember. Not only Digby have you provided the cuckoo in my life, but also the nest. Explain that, if you will. It needs no explanation, does it? Put that lamp standard down. Arnold, what are you getting at? Isn't it obvious, chum? The payoff, the kiss-off, and then the write-off, eh? Confess! You ever were too melodramatic. Are you referring to the fact that I've lent you my cottage in the country and that you then had the impertinence to inform your family that you'd purchased it from me? I was at a low ebb, Digby. 
something was needed to boost the morale of the troops, so I told them, yes, I told my family, they had a home of their own, and I meant to buy the hovel off you at some later date. It is not a hovel, and it was not for sale. But you went along with the story. For old time's sake, I could see the mess you were in, Armand. For old time's sake, no, you never cared about me. I've been a convenience to oh. you. You can park your old property on me, can't you? The same way as you park your old lovers in that... Bratchy Spornickel. <laughs> Katie. Katie, my darling. If only you hadn't had ginger hair, I'd never have suspected. My hair was sandy. I used to be called Sandy Lloyd. Brandy Sandy, eh? Oh, yes, I remember. I have never had intimacy with anyone. In that case, I don't think you know what intimacy is. The whole idea repels me. I don't know why. Perhaps I should have been a priest. Liar! Viper in my bosom! Please, leave this office. You're drunk, Arnold. Don't try and push me out, Put chum. my ornaments down and get out. I knew Ada long before I knew you, and I intend to know her long after. Yes, everything between us is finished, Arnold. I can't take any more. Lend me a hundred pounds? No. Fifty? No. Well, twenty, then. Where's your petty cash box? Put that down. Arnold! Don't you dare stop me. This is my money, rightfully. I let you produce those elephant pictures, didn't I? It was you got rich, not me. Because I didn't piss it all up against the wall. Put my cash box down. No! No! I'll, I'll call the police. I'll tell them you're a fornicating swine, a robber, and a, a thief. Give me my cash box. Give me my money. It's mine. My dues. It's mine. It's my cash D Digby? He stopped breathing. He's gone to collect the big percentage in the sky. How frightfully inconsiderate. You're right, Helen, I did for the blighter. He fell against the cash box. Were you holding it? Yes, trying to retrieve the money he'd stolen from me over the years. Does this make me a murderer? No, darling. Tell me, tell me if it does. I'll give myself up. The law's an oath, but I don't mind if you find me guilty. No, no, you mustn't think like that. In the highest courts, you are innocent. Beyond the reach of man. Where our love was conceived. Oh, Arnold, for three years now, you've been on the point of leaving your wife. Since I met you, oh, I'm fed up with the deceit. Rolling amongst books in your mobile library van, meeting you in obscure laybys of country roads. I want to give you a home. That's what I'm trying to get away from, Helen. It will be different with me. How can I be sure? Try me. The past is done. One mistake doesn't condemn you to a lifetime in prison. Thank you. What's that? A flat. That arm. Oh. That's another body. I'm looking after it for a friend. Looking after it for a friend? Yes, I thought we might dispose of both of them at the same time, if it's all the same to you. I'm returning a favour sort of thing. You know how it is. It's hard to get out of these things. What sort of favour has anyone done for you that, that you need to keep a body in your piano for them? Oh, you think I've been put upon, do you? Put upon? Who are these people? Mafiosa, Helen. I'm in the middle of a drugs war. I'll be frank with you. An actor needs a sideline. I tried antiques, but I was always dropping things. When this drug running to the West Country sort of fell into my lap, but I need a new distribution setup, and your mobile library van would be an ideal cover. Oh, my God! So how about it? Is it? How about it? Where's she going? I couldn't care less. I've got rid of her after three years of hanging around my neck. Shall I put it? I could wing her from here. Now let her go. Yeah, I've got plenty of ammo. No, she won't trouble us again. It's family life that's important, sir. You're well rid of her. I heard her going on. Every word. Stump it. We must get rid of these bodies tonight. Can't leave evidence like this hanging around, can we? You're a mafiosi hit man, eh? <laughs> I made up that story. Oh, aye. A dangerous man, eh? Bang, bang, you're dead, eh? It got influence, have you? I might have. Oh, aye. Not as good as a wink, eh? Wipe them out, walk out, next boat back to England. No bother. Oh, aye. We're in this together, chaps, from now on. We're a team. 
The A-Team. There's something going on outside. The whole universe is going on outside, Brian. All we can do is play our part. We need provisions. We need a lot of things. We've got hostages. That brings all we need from outside with hostages. I'm not disputing that we've got hostages. I'm saying we need a plan. It's sink or swim, lads. Together. From now on. Right, well, I don't know any more card tricks and nobody feels like singing tonight. Then I suggest an early night. I'm ready for the cellar, aren't you, everybody? Yes. It's not so bad down there with the mattresses. I hate spiders. Try not to. They don't know what they're doing, these people. They're getting tireder and tireder. They can make mistakes. They're disorientated. Something's got to give. Soon. I'm working on a line of action, Roger. Leave it to me. I've left my life to you because I've had to. But I don't intend to much longer. All right. Trust me. I don't know how to anymore. I wonder if they'd let us take more blankets down from the window box. Don't go near the window box. Stand clear. You're tired, Mother. We're all tired. Mistakes can be made. Roger's right. We're on edge here. When you go down, I'll ask to stay up a moment to talk. Why? Because it's time for something to happen. Down you go, then. Ooh. I don't like putting you down here. Can't we sleep in our own beds? Not till we're married. What? Ooh. Oh, your father and I are going to have a man-to-man -man talk, Miss Katie. Oh, After which I expect to make a proposal to you. You must be joking. Strict segregation. I can't bear spiders. I'm here with you. I'll kill them all. Man of influence, eh? Pull strings in high places. Favours done, favours returned. What? Can you get me back inside the hospital, mister? I want me own bed back. I want me regular grub. There's no visitors here. There's, there's no games room, is there? There's no ping pong. This is hell, this is. I think that Mr. Derry can make a very good case to the courts to have you released from the hospital. What? Forever? Yes, I'm afraid so. I'll kill him. He's ruined my life. Calls himself a doctor. <laughs> He's no doctor. I've never seen him with golf clubs. Have you? No, but were you to say mm. that that body which I brought home was alive when I got here? What? That I walked in here with Digby Lloyd, who had arrived with me for Katie's 21st birthday party, and you were disturbed. You slugged him with the butt of your revolver. You killed him. I'll kill anyone if they stand in my way. I'm like you, Mr. Goss. Now, were you to take credit for that killing? Give me the credit, eh? Yes. That's very nice of you. And that'll put you in hospital for a long time. You promise? I'm helping you. It's Elephant Bill. Oh, you're the sort of man I trust. You're my sort of man. Man to man. Nothing wrong with you, son. Share a body count. Have one on me. <laughs> oh, I'll do the same for you one day. If you're in a jam, call on me. Time for our little talk, then, Mr Gosport. I hope to demonstrate to you... I'll be a good son-in-law. We're going back inside. Mr. Gosport's fixed it. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. Look, we don't need a pantomime routine. <laughs> ah! God! You shot him? Oh, my God! <laughs> That's one of mine. <laughs> that should get me put away for a long time, eh, Mr. Gosport? Every little help. But don't overdo it. You, you won't impress them. Uh, Mr. Gosport... <laughs> Don't blame Mary. He wasn't really ready for outpatient therapy. I take the responsibility. I signed him out. I shouldn't have done. My brother's bigger than yours. That's right, Eric. You'll see him next visiting day, don't we? Are you all right? Can I make you comfortable? Worst thing since Dickens in those wards... I treated him. I was the only one who cared. I, I, 
I give him coloured water. No drugs. Because I knew. It's the mind. The mind you've got to reach. My mother. My mother. So you're returning to London. Are you sure you feel well enough? Oh, yes. Digby. It was a misunderstanding. What was? Being left for dead. I was rendered unconscious for three days. I might as well have been dead. I thought you were. Cried. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, I'm sorry to have misled you. Not your fault. Don't be a chump. Would you uh, consider getting another agent? After all we've been through together, certainly not. I see. You and your family have gone through a nightmare. What was it like? Is there a play there, do you think? Two loonies break out of a mental home, take a quite mad family hostage. They fall out amongst each other. One loony shoots and kills the other. The survivor goes back to the hospital, gentle as a lamb. I'll be visiting him next Thursday. How did it affect you, old boy? Oh, just another day in the life of. <laughs> and the family? The family. The ecstasy and the agony. I love your family, damn it, Arnold. I feel dragged in. I care. I know you do. Try and get me some work, old chap. Here's your cab coming. Ah. To the railway station, then. To Moscow, to Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold, before I go... Oh, you can't trust anybody these days, can you? Stick with your old friends. Cheerio. I need a drink. In Lunes by John Antrobus, the cast was Arnold Robert Stevens, mother Sheila Grant, Roger, Jonathan Taffler, Katie, Jenny Funnel, and Digby, Edward D'Souza. Brian, John Antrobus, Eric, Ronald Herdman, Helen, Kate Percival, and the policeman, Gordon Reed. The play was directed by Jerry Jones.